all across America and around the world. This is Veterans Radio. This is Veterans Radio. Welcome to Veterans Radio. I am Jim Fossone. I'm the officer of the deck today. We've got some great programs for you. I think you'll find very interesting. We always want to remind you, you can find more about Veterans Radio at its Facebook site or by going to veteransradio.net where we're on the web 24-7. You can find a lot of our podcasts there as well. We post new ones every Tuesday, so you can get a new story, a new interview, something you didn't know before by going to veteransradio.net. And before we get started, we want to thank our sponsors. First up, we want to thank National Veteran Business Development Council, nvbdc.org. It was established to certify both service-disabled and veteran-owned businesses. You'll find out how they can help your business by going to nvbdc.org. We also want to thank Eisenhower Center. It's a brain injury recovery center. Learn more about eisenhowercenter.com. They're located in Michigan and in Florida. We want to thank Legal Help for Veterans. Legal Help for Veterans fights for veterans' disability rights all across the nation. You can reach them at 800-693-4800 or on the web at legalhelpforveterans.com. Contact us if you'd like to be a sponsor on Veterans Radio, and let's move on to our program. We want to welcome to Veterans Radio today Dr. Harriet L. Smith. Uh, she has a doctorate in education, at the and, and we're going to talk about a program that she's a program director for at the University of Maryland Global Campus. Harriet, welcome to Veterans Radio. Thank you for having me. I appreciate this opportunity to talk about the program. Well, let me start a little bit with um, some background to set this up for folks. Uh, Harriet uh, received her Bachelor of Arts from Hampton University. She received her uh, Master's of Science in Administration from the University of Maryland Global Campus. And uh, she received her Doctorate of Education in Human Resource Development from the George Washington University. So uh, we've got a lot of smarts going on here. And (laughs) she is now the Program Director for Transformational Leadership and Project Management at the School of Business and Business Management uh, at the University of Maryland, and in particular the Global Campus, where she's involved with the Maryland's... um, Master of Science in Transformational Leadership, which is a really interesting uh, master's degree program, really designed for students with military experience. But before we get into that, uh, Harriet, tell us a little bit about the uh, University of Maryland. Well, I will say that the University of Maryland, which I attended um, and have had the great opportunity to work for in a different capacity as an adjunct faculty, Um, and also now as a program director. But the University of Maryland Global Campus, we we actually have um, programs that service students worldwide. Um, And it's a degree granting public university in the United States. And our enrollment continues to increase. We have overseas division where we offer both on-site and in-person classes in more than 20 countries and territories throughout the world. And we are a leader in online education with adult students, um, adult students that have busy lives, full-time employees, families, other obligations, and have taken the, the decision to work on a degree to advance their livelihood or their positions or their experiences in life. But I think it's um, also an honor to be a previous student, but to also come back and work with a program that is designed specifically for students with a military background. Because I think about my own experience when I was working on my master's degree and I was in the military and the support that I got from the university was um, it was just awesome. It helped me to propel to where I am today. So I think a lot of our students also feel 
equally grateful to that opportunity, not just our military students, but all of our students, because we have such a global outreach with students around the world as well as faculty members. Well, tell us a little bit about your um, military experience. I saw in some of the bio that I looked at that uh, you've done, you've held senior management positions at a number of different educational organizations, not only the University of Maryland, but Maryland State Department of Education, but also it mentioned the Air Force. So I'm kind of curious about uh, that as well. Yes, I I actually was discharged um, from the military back in the early 90s. And I went in as a reservist, and that changed um, because I became active duty um, during the Gulf War. And I was, my home base was at Joint Base Andrews Air Force Base, and I was there probably about eight years. And my, the work that I did was a mental health professional, and I enjoyed it. And really got the opportunity to sort of work both sides as a reservist and as an active duty member. But it really helped me develop the type of skills that I needed to work in the field of education, social services, and also to develop a network with a lot of individuals that I'm still um, in touch with. But it really did sort of provide the foundation for my background early on as an individual coming out of a a bachelor's degree program and trying to really decide the path that I wanted to take. And the Air Force sort of provided that, that answer for me. It helped me to sort of decide which direction I wanted to go in, in terms of my professional career. And really just provided a lot of resources and a lot of valuable um, insight in terms of developing a career. So I really have to give a lot of credit to that experience. Well, I think that's what we find in a lot of successful folks who've been in the military. They say, hey, I really got probably more out of it than I gave. Uh, <laughs> and and that's, that's a good thing. But I think yeah. sometimes we don't tell those stories. That's so right. so uh, parents of kids looking at, is this an option? Maybe don't realize this is just a step along the way. And yeah. that's what it was for you as you moved on to get a master's and a, and a PhD and now find yourself in a program at a university that's really done does a lot of lot of work with and focus on uh, the military, um, and and I want to back up. This is a public institution. We're not talking to somebody in one of these private institutions, which have you know unfortunately been in the news for causing VA GI Bill kind of problems for folks. So um, as a public university, uh, talk a little bit about the numbers or the size or scope of. Uh, the University of Maryland's interaction with the military community? Well, I will say that um, there's there's different relationships that we have, of course, with having military students. But I think it's also, it, it lends itself to the different departments that are within the university that are geared specifically to supporting students that are in the military or have separated from the military, but still want to come back and get an education. So there are advisors and success coaches that work specifically with our military students in helping them to determine the academic program that they wanna follow um, and also providing them support and resources while they're in the program. There's also financial aid advisors that work directly with students and their GI Bill and payments that they need to do. But also because We know that sometimes our military students, um, their academic journey can be interrupted. As I explained in my case, you know, I was in the midst of working on a master's degree and had to take a break because of military commitments. But we also are flexible enough to work with students to be able to help them still keep on track or pick up where they left off if they're deployed or they have to take some time away. But we, you know, we work with our military students and first responders, as well as all of our students, but specifically those groups, to make sure that they get the support that they need, mainly because they're in a career field where sometimes it's sort of there is, you know, a, a place where career commitment and your academic commitments meet, 
and there may not be the opportunity to overlap. So I think the, the university has done a good job in terms of working with and supporting the military students. Well, uh, two facts that I saw in doing some research that sort of drove that point home to me that the University of Maryland here isn't a sort of Johnny-come-lately to, oh, geez, let's help out uh, uh, military and veterans, is that um, you've been serving, the university's been serving the armed forces since 1947, and that today it's estimated that the university has enrolled more than 50,000 military service members, veterans, and military family members. So, you know, those two facts to me tell me a lot about there's a pretty deep and wide commitment here um, is what you're telling me, Harriet. Absolutely. I mean, UMGC operates on U.S. military installations in 20-plus countries, um, Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. And as you mentioned, it's not just for the military student, but also to their dependents, you know. So there is sort of a wide net that we sort of cast to be able to make sure that students that want to get this opportunity and take advantage of it do so. But we're offering courses not only on site, but at these installations so that students can find the time and fit it into their schedule to be able to take. But yes, there is a a rich history of educating the military um, through the University of Maryland Global Campus. We're talking to Dr. Smith, uh, Harriet Smith, who is the Program Director for Transformational Leadership and Project Management at the School of Business at the University of Maryland Global Campus. And in particular, I want to now move to an interesting program that is available, which is a Master's of Science in Transformational Leadership. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. I will tell you that this is a great program that I have enjoyed not only working and managing, but designing. Uh, The program launched in the spring of 2019. So we're just at two years of of, um, being in existence. And the Masters of Science in Transformational Leadership, it's a graduate program that's only available to military service members and veterans. And it's designed for the student who wants to build upon and maximize their leadership training and skills as they transition to a civilian work environment. So the course focuses on augmenting leadership competencies that students developed in the military and repurposing those skills to apply to leadership in civilian organizations. We know that students with military experience are in demand by corporations, nonprofits, and government agencies because they come with so many great qualities and skills that their military service has instilled in them. Well, one of the um, things we hear from people transitioning is sort of like, how do I, how do I get folks to recognize the skill set I have, or how do I repackage it? And it seems like this uh, uh, particular master's program really helps one sort of pull all that information together and maybe yes. put it in a way the civilian corporate world better understands it. Am I, am I kind of understanding this right? That's correct. Um, the program presents opportunities for students to really go through simulated work projects that they would in a civilian organization. And the goal for the faculty mentors that work with these students is to really support students. So we lay out plans along with a roadmap of how to work towards deliverables. But all along the way, the students are receiving um, additional support. There's resources through our online library. We have writing tutoring services, statistics tutoring Um, any support that the student needs, because we do find that a lot of our students have been out of academia for a while. So this is sort of an opportunity for them to step back in. And in some cases, the online classroom is new to them, the online resources they're not familiar with. So we try to make sure that students feel that they're being supported and embraced um, as they start their academic program. But one thing that's also unique about the Transformational Leadership Program is that it's really focused on the transformational leadership skills that leaders need to not only work 
on their own internal development, but also leading others, leading the organization, leading teams. It really is a multifaceted type of program that uses what we refer to as project-based learning, meaning that the student gets hands-on experience to be able to enhance or learn new techniques that enable them to affect change, um, to work on marketing projects, analytical, analytical projects, just a number of different disciplines. This program touches on multidisciplines, so students really get to participate in different projects with different landscapes. Well, there's some fascinating, at least by title, and now I'm not sure I'd want to take the course. It'd probably be too hard for me. But you have some interesting core courses. Um, I'm going to mention a few of these titles, and maybe you can comment on them. But but um, uh, repositioning your leadership skills, leading with strategy and performance measures, leading through change and uncertainty. These are, you know, I, I think really drilled down kind of course topics. Uh, tell us how you came up with these and tell us a little bit about them. Well, I would say that this sort of started with um, working with our military strategic operations departments and really honing in on what are some of the skills that we can expect students will bring to the program and then looking at it from the academic lens of Here's what employers are looking for. You know, so we, we sort of had different teams to sort of go out and evaluate, get input from employers to say, what is it that you're looking for and how can we best serve the students to make sure that they hit the ground running? So one of the courses that you mentioned, Repositioning Leadership Skills, is helping the student to develop a leadership development plan based on where they want to go. You're at this point in your career. What's your next step? Identify those leadership skills that have served you well, as well as those that you'd like to change or develop, and we'll support that. So students will go through a questionnaire with information that will give them some areas for improvements, things they're doing well, and how they can now transition those skills to different roles in the civilian workforce. Also, leading with strategy and performance measures, that really looks at looking at the financial picture of an organization and also combining the analytics of a program or a product and how you can improve upon that and then developing a marketing profile. So that's sort of our, our most multi-disciplined course because we're incorporating finance, data analytics, and marketing. Also, leading in the organization is another course, and this really is an HR-focused course, but it gives students the opportunity to work through diversity, inclusion, and equity um, concepts and conflicts, looking at surveys, looking at morale, identifying strategies to help employees develop their skills so, so that they can become better employees and leaders. And also one of our, our premier courses, because it's the last course, so of course students are always shooting towards that, is our leadership capstone course. And this course allows students to step out of the classroom setting into a collaborative partnership with an organization. They can choose to work with their unit, if they're still um, active duty, they can work within that, or they can identify an organization or company um, that they may be working with if they've already transitioned. And this project allows students to do a real hands-on project where they are either organizing um, a product or initiative, doing an organizational diagnostic, helping the organization to look for change, areas to improve business operations. And it really is the start of a partnership because for those students that work with their current workplace, they're able to shine and show all of the skills and you know feel good about a project that the organization is using. So that's probably one of the, the most exciting components 
is when students get to use those skills they've developed in the classroom in a real world setting. Well, I think that's what everybody in a graduate program is looking for is, hey, I'm going into this graduate program to get this master's degree because it has a specific application to the real world or the business world or the nonprofit world, where, wherever they want to go. So that right. kind of course really involves them uh, and, and motivates them. Let, let me talk a little bit, uh, and we're talking to uh, Dr. Harriet Smith, who's uh, with the University of Maryland Global Campus, and we're talking about the Masters of Science and Transformational Leadership um, program that she des- helped design. You're, you're working with a different cohort of potential students for this graduate program. They're, they're, they're probably a little older than most uh, graduate students. They've been in the service. They've had some uh, soft skills uh, and probably some other uh, skills that they bring that others wouldn't because they haven't had those experiences. Talk to us a little bit about the type of student that you see uh, attracted to this program. I would say that there's probably two categories of students. There's the student that is really undecided about whether they're going to remain in the military or if they're going to make the transition. They know that transition is coming at some point, um, but they're, they're really on the fence and, you know, they're decided that I want to be able to have some education that can support me when I'm ready to make that transition. We also have the student who's already made the transition, who's working in the civilian workforce. Um, and it's, it's a great combination when you have that student, those two students in the same cohort at the same time, because I think it, there is sort of a commonality that the students have because of their military experience, but the student who has already made the transition in most cases is very candid about sort of the challenges as well as the successes of making that transition. Um, And a lot of times when I'm teaching a course, I use that sort of as a discussion opportunity for students to really talk about their experience in the military. And now that they've made that transition, um, you know, share with their cohort members, what are some of the things they would do differently Um, What are some of the things that they found weren't just as challenging as they maybe thought? And one resource that we offer is sort of a career website. So it provides the student who is sitting on the fence, that first group that I defined, um, there's resources that they can look at that includes a job bank. So different job opportunities, an opportunity to simulate an interview Um, resume building tools. And there's also a series of workshop videos that sort of take students through the stages of here's what you may encounter when you transition. Here's going to be the difference in the culture of the military or civilian, a small business, a large corporation. So I really do think that it's having those two separate groups of students, which have really become support systems for each other based on their experiences. And one of the things that I can do as a program director when I'm looking at that and also when I'm teaching the course is to make sure that I use that, you know, those real student experiences to help them to understand and to be that support for them as well. And this is an online um, master's program, if I understand it correctly. It's online and we also offer... um, hybrid courses and hybrid courses blend online instruction with an in-person meeting. So in some instances, the student may work online for a period of time. Every other week, they will meet in person with their faculty and cohort members. But the majority of our students are taking the courses on online and that's across the university as a whole. And uh, since this is a new program and it's been up for just a couple of years now, um, how has the first couple of years, uh, you know, met with the expectations that you had in designing this and and getting this off the ground, uh, Dr. Smith? 
I will say that with any new program, um, there is going to be a period of time where you're making the determination of what changes do I need to make? And you're also able to pull that, that feedback for any program improvement and changes from faculty as well as students. Um, and as I mentioned, we're in our second year. So this is a good opportunity for us to really go back and look at the course because a lot of information and materials change over a two year period. I mean, for instance, you know, when we think about the pandemic, how that has affected the way organizations work and, you know, how an online university works. To be able to incorporate that into the curriculum now, sort of as lessons learned, is something we wouldn't have done in the beginning. But I look at these type of opportunities to be able to say, how can we bolster the curriculum? How can we make changes? And also asking our students, what are the needs? You know, once a student is close to completing the program, we'll ask, did the program meet your needs? What are some changes? What would you like to see? So it really is just sort of coming full circle with every stakeholder that's involved in not only designing, teaching the program and the courses, but also the recipients, the students, being able to get their, gather information from those sources and to take a step back to determine what changes, if any, are needed or which direction we want to go in. But I'm happy to say that we have um, had 10 cohorts go through the program, and there are some students that are able to go straight through. It takes approximately 18 months to complete the program without interruption. But we do know that there are some students that may need to take a semester off or, you know, depending on commitments and other things that they have going on in their life. Um, to make that adjustment that they know they are able to pick back up and start when they're ready to resume. Well, it's certainly, a you know, 2020 was with the pandemic and even today, really weird years. Uh, yeah. It did a few things. It advanced technology. We all, we all got advanced faster on our um, adoption of online learning and the, and the tools uh, have improved so much over the last year. So uh, that's probably really helped in terms of uh, what's being done at the University of Maryland Global Campus in this program and in others. Um, but Dr. Smith, uh, Harriet, if folks are interested in this and maybe wanting to explore what's available, uh, is there a website that they can go to and do some exploration or how, how do they get more information? Yes. Yes, um, anyone can go online and do a search for University of Maryland Global Campus Transformational Leadership Program. And my information is at the bottom of that webpage, but it will give a full detail of the program, a description, what the required courses are, uh, the application process, tuition, any information that students need in terms of applying to the program will be on the web page. And again, that's just going to online and looking up University of Maryland Global Campus Transformational Leadership Program. And the, the uh, homepage website is so simple. It's umgc.edu, umgc.edu, University of Maryland Global Campus edu so just the the beginning of that so uh it's a very interesting program i think it's really well designed for those with military experience and that sort of hey how do i take what i have and move forward um this is uh, clearly something that isn't just being uh put together because it may attract some folks but it really serves a a, a dynamic purpose and i and i uh commend you for putting it together and commend the University of Maryland Global Campus for saying, yeah, let's let's advance this. Thank you. And, and you know, that's what we hear from students. Students really do feel like I'm getting probably as close to a real world experience in a civilian setting um, that I would because we went to great lengths to identify the type of work projects that are being done across industries, you know, nonprofit, for-profit, government, self-starting, 
you know, one person business, just whatever different examples we could think of so that students really would get an interdisciplinary approach to using their leadership skills across different settings. Dr. Harriet Smith, thank you for taking some time today to explain this program to our veteran radio listeners. Thank you. I really appreciate having the opportunity and look forward to getting some questions or um, just some emails to learn more about the program. And I want to thank everybody for listening to Veterans Radio today. I am Jim Fawson. It's been a pleasure to be your host. I'm a veterans disability lawyer at Legal Help for Veterans, and you can reach us at 800-693-4800 or legalhelpforveterans.com on the web. You can follow Veterans Radio on Facebook and listen to its podcasts and Internet radio shows by going to veteransradio.net. And until next time, you are dismissed. If you have a VA claim denied by the Board of Veterans' Appeals, contact Legal Help for Veterans at 1-800-693-4800. They're experts in handling cases before the U.S. Court of Appeals for Veterans' Claims. Their number again, 1-800-693-4800. We again want to thank our national sponsors, the National Veterans Business Development Council, NVBDC.org, Eisenhower Center, VA Ann Arbor Health Care System, the Vietnam Veterans of America, Charles S. Kettles Chapter, Ann Arbor, Michigan, VFW Graf O'Hara Post 423 in Ann Arbor, and the American Legion Press Corn Post 46, also in Ann Arbor. They keep us on the air, as does your support. Go to Facebook, go to veteransradio.net, and support our efforts. And until next time, you are dismissed. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.